When I was younger, I had this dream about adopting a cute little foreign baby and feeling so good about myself. You know, saving a child from the slums and the poverty of a third world country. But when I was honest with myself, this way of thinking was pretty selfish. When it's all about the outlook and the appearance. The picture of a white, privileged, middle-class family with their token foreign child. Where people see you and your family and they straight away know the good deed you have done. There's definitely nothing wrong with adopting from overseas. In fact, if you have the right heart behind it, it can be a really special thing. But if we genuinely have compassion for those children who need homes, why not consider foster care in our own neighbourhood? The idea of taking a drug and alcohol affected baby and an abused child that was dropped off at the police station down the road from the very place you live, that's definitely a less attractive move and it's much less appealing. You know, that idea that someone could look at you and your family and not even notice that this child wasn't yours, that they're adopted or a foster child, that they look the same as you, that's a really scary place to be. But when I watched my parents and I watched other people around me who were fostering, I began to see the heart behind it and that's when my desire for these children really grew. When we became foster carers, me and my husband had actually only been married for just a year. We had no kids of our own and we had one spare bedroom. I was still actually full-time uni and my husband was full-time working and we weren't in a financially great place or it wasn't because we'd had our own kids and now we were you know, living the life and had, had time. It was actually just because we felt this is what God wanted from us. And so we decided to do it. We simply just couldn't ignore it or didn't want to push this idea aside because of outside expectations. So we told the foster care agency that we were happy just to have one single child just once a month, just to start off with, and that it could be a baby because that was the age that I was most familiar with. And I thought, you know, that would be a good place to start. Um, so the same night that we were actually approved, we got a call. They told us that they had two and a half year old twins. So it was not part of our plan, but not knowing how to say no, we, we said yes and a couple of hours later, these little twins rocked up at our door and yeah, the rest feels like a really blurry, messy, but yet really fun weekend. Me and my husband would get to bed each night and we would just look at each other and laugh because we just knew we had no idea what we were doing, but we knew that something about what we were doing felt so right and we knew it was just the start of our fostering journey. Fast forward a couple of years, we had a lot more kids and babies come to our door. A lot of these kids would come with just such a fear and sadness in their eyes and, you know, they didn't know what type of people we were, if we were gonna be kind to them, if we were gonna accept them. To have the opportunity to love these kids, to give them nourishing foods, to read them books, to teach them about God and to, you know, cuddle them and even to wake up for these midnight feeds for a baby was actually such a deeply honoring thing. And you know, to see the transformation of some of these children, that they come with this sadness and they come with this blank face, but they then learn to laugh and to play as a child should again. And yeah, it's such an amazing thing to see. And I think it's something that we can never get over. So one day I got a call from the foster care agency about picking up a newborn baby. And this was the first time I'd ever had a newborn baby. And I was honestly so nervous, but I was also super excited as well. And so I remember driving to the hospital and I just, I remember the nerves I had. I, I just couldn't get out of my mind, like the life that this little girl was being born into, you know, like she didn't know that her mum wasn't going to be there to take her home. And she didn't even know who I was or if I was the one who carried her for nine months. You know, like a lot of mums, they have nine months to prepare that these babies come into the world already loved. Their mums have set up these beautiful nurseries and, you know, already brought things for them. Their families are anticipating their arrival and they can't wait to meet them. And then there's these other children in, in the foster care system that are born not wanted or born to people that aren't able to look after them. And you know, even though that felt strange, like, you know, having this newborn baby that wasn't mine, I could either ignore that and not do anything about it or I could just choose to go pick her up from the hospital and go love her the best way that I could. And it's actually a strange feeling because I feel like God really blesses us and other Christian foster carers that I know with this, this love that is not our own, this love to, love a child so much even though you don't know them and I feel like that moment the nurse led me down that corridor and that I I looked at this little newborn baby girl laying in this little glass bassinet I instantly fell in love with her and yeah I don't I don't know why I can't explain it but when you feel it you feel it and it was just yeah an amazing thing to experience so on my birthday a couple of years ago I got 
the sweetest gift I've ever received. We got this little four month old boy, but actually not long after he arrived, he began to scream and we could just see this fear in his eyes, a fear that I actually didn't even know was possible for a boy of his age. He, he just screamed and screamed and we were actually just wondering if we'd made the right decision by saying yes. We really didn't know how to calm him. We tried everything and it was a scary move. It's always a scary move saying yes to a kid when you don't know you know, what the plan is, you don't know where they've come from or how long necessarily you're gonna have them for. But we said yes to this boy and he eventually did calm down. And before you knew it, we, you know, watched him crawl. We watched him learn to walk. We celebrated his first birthday, his Christmas. This little boy just became part of our family and we just learned to love him so much. So little did we know that actually within those few weeks of receiving this little boy, God had actually blessed us with our own biological child as well. So after finding out I was pregnant, it actually made me think about some comments that we in the past we had received from people. Comments like, oh, wait till you have your own child or nothing beats your own child when they knew we had these foster kids. Yeah, and I guess it's, it scared me knowing that we were gonna bring our own home and I knew that I would love my own, but you know, would there be a difference in the level that I, I loved my own and I loved a foster child? And I really hoped not, but I didn't have the experience to know if that would be the case. Yeah, I just remember the moment I held my my baby girl in my arms. It was just the most surreal feeling. And, you know, it, it brings tears to my eyes just thinking about how much we love our daughter. It was, yeah, it was just such a special moment. And bringing her home to meet our little foster boy was, yeah, it was also amazing. And I think what we soon realized is that we love these children. We love both of them. It was just such, and a, a blessing, I guess, to see that we did have the capacity to love these kids equally, that we didn't see one as our own and one as just a kid, another kid, you know? We actually had this love that went so deep for both of them and yeah, we are really, truly grateful for that. So I'm not saying that every single child that walks straight through your door is, you know, you have the capacity to love with everything you are and just as your own child. This little boy was, was with us from such a young age and you know as we watched him develop as we watched him grow and as we became his parents it was inevitable that we would love him as our own that he became ours and we we really do hope and pray that he can remain ours and he can we can be his home forever when we look back on our fostering journey we realize that this process has taught us to love on levels we actually didn't even know possible you know, these kids come from their different situations, from their most often really scary and sad situations, and they bring their baggage, they bring their mess, they bring their some of those behavioral issues or different problems, but we can't help but love them. And I guess when I think about this, it's almost a small reflection of the love that God has for us. We come broken and sinful and with life's burdens, and he offers us his grace, he forgives us, and all we have to do is rock up to his door and he opens it up and he embraces us just as we are. In one of Jesus' parables, he tells us a story of a man who was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. He sent his servant to go tell those who had been invited to come now for everything was ready. But they all began to make excuses about other things they had to do and they didn't come. So the servant came back to the master and told him the news and he told the servant to go back out to the streets and the alleys of the towns and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And these were the people that came. It's a simple story, but yet very powerful. It tells that the heart of God is not just for those that apparently have it all together. It is open to whoever wants to come, no matter the past, no matter the circumstances. God doesn't see people the way we do. We judge based on the outside. We treat people differently according to what they look like or what they can offer us. But God is not like that. He invites us all to come and be part of his table and to eat with him. These children are seen as unwanted. They're seen as a burden to society, but to God, they are so desperately loved. And it is an honor to show them that. You know, if this is all I do in this life, man, it's so worth it. It is so much more valuable than, you know, the job I could have, the career I could have. You know, the money I could make, the house I could live in. Yes, those things are part of life, but they don't even compare to what it is to be part of God's table and to help others find their seat. And this is my plea to you, to consider God's invitation. 
to take a seat at his table and even perhaps open your doors to those most vulnerable in our society. What? What is this? Hey, back down. Stop looking at this thing.